Chapter 2 of our video tutorial is going to be dealing with Photoshop's interface and some of the essential tools that you'll be needing to create your own designs. To begin with, let's make sure that we're all on the same page. And what I would like you to do is to go to the top of your Photoshop menu and go to where it says Windows. Now one of the things that you can look for is the workspace. And in workspace, there's a lot of different types of workspaces that we can deal with. However, the one that I want to be dealing with is the one that you'll have when you open up Photoshop for the first time. And that is the Essentials workspace. So if you don't have the Essentials clicked, I'd like you to click on that. Notice that there are some other ones, like if you're into photography, you can open up certain workspaces that have particular tools and panels that will be useful to photographers. However, since our particular video tutorial is dealing with web interface design, the essentials, or the default, is going to be more than perfect for what we need. At this point, let's discuss some of the basic panels. You'll notice over here on the left that we have the toolbar. And within this panel, you're going to have all of the tools that we are going to be working with inside of Photoshop, some of which we'll pay more attention to for this particular video tutorial, and others that we'll be looking at only in a cursory fashion. However, do note this, that when you are working with your toolbar, the little double arrows that you see up here at the top, if you click on them, will allow you to see your toolbar as either a two-column toolbar layout or if you click back to the default, a one-column layout as I have right here. A couple other things that I can bring to your attention. Whenever you click on any one of these tools, you'll notice that there's an area up at the top that gives you a number of options for that particular tool. So clicking on any one of these should be changing the tools options that you see right up at the top here. Another thing is that these tools oftentimes will have a little arrow at the bottom next to them. If you notice a tool that has an arrow, that means to access the tool, you can click on it. But if you were to hold onto that tool a little bit longer, you'll notice that there are other tools buried underneath this specific icon. So this one here, I would click and hold to access the other ones. Same thing with this one. Click and hold. Some other things that you can be aware of is that whenever you put your cursor over one of these tools but not click on it, you'll notice a little context menu opens up and it gives you the name of that tool, but there's also a letter associated with that tool and those are the keyboard shortcuts that you'll be using to access these tools. Now, this is a really important thing to try and get used to because working with shortcuts can really help speed up your development time. It really makes things a lot easier to work with and saves you from having to move your mouse back and forth, back and forth throughout your composition. So it also allows you to be more creative because you're not wrestling with the tools and interface as much as a beginner would. Down at the bottom inside your toolbar, you'll see that in Photoshop, we also have foreground and background colors. Now the foreground and background colors can be changed. All you would need to do is to click on it, and this would open up the color picker window, which would allow you to come in here and choose from any number of different colors. And for example, if I were to choose green, but maybe I didn't want green, I could use this slider to move to blues or to reds or other colors as well. If you were to click OK, you would see that that color change would take effect in the foreground color. If you wanted to change the background, just clicking on it will open up the same window. And then you could go through choosing your own colors as you go along. You'll also notice that here on the right hand side, we happen to have a number of panels. These are the default panels that open up with the essential workspace. And you can see here that they too have these double arrows. Now these double arrows with regards to the right side panels will expand those panels so you could see them a little bit better. And you'll notice in that first row we have history and properties by default. I'm just going to collapse that. And you'll see here in the second row that you have color and swatches. 
adjustments in styles, layers, channels, and paths. Look what happens if we collapse these icons. Now, in some cases, you can move this so that it's a little bit larger and that you could read what they are. Notice, if I put my mouse here, I can do the same thing. However, if you needed a little extra bit of real estate, you can just slide these down so that when you collapse the panels, they're not taking up as much room as they normally would. If you were to click on any of these panels when they are collapsed, they will just open up as these small little side panels here. Same thing for these as well. Now another thing that you might notice is that these panels actually happen to have some iconography here at the top and a line separating them as you go along. What this means is these are groups of panels that can be actually opened and closed or moved together. For example, you'll see here that when I've expanded them, color and swatches are together as a group. When I collapse them, I can actually move this group. If I grab that little dotted line at the top here and move them around, this will enable me to create a floating version of that panel. And I can click on the tabs to jump between each one of those elements. So jumping between swatches and color is pretty easy to do. If I wanted to return that back, all you have to do is to drag this, and as soon as you see a blue line, you can drag it back to where it was. Now if I wanted to, I could also take some of these elements and move them into other groupings, just as I've done here, so that when we expand it, now color swatches and adjustments happen to be together. If I didn't want that, I could move it back. I'm just going to collapse this, take my adjustments, and move them back here where I ha also have styles. One last thing, if you'll notice down at the bottom, there are two other tabs, one for mini bridge and one for the timeline. Now we're not going to really be using the timeline all that much in this video tutorial, but we will be looking at mini bridge a little bit later. So just be aware that double clicking will close mini bridge and a single click will open it as well. Come back in the next video and I'll show you how we can work with mini bridge to open up some images and start having some fun inside of Photoshop CS6.